day is it? Why do you even ask? Happy Halloween, everybody! <laughs> and also, it's TMNT time! And I'm not wearing a TMNT shirt because this I like this shirt. This shirt is pretty dope. Anyway, today we're gonna have a look at spooktacular monsters. Every time the TMNT were created into hideous monster creatures. Some of them you might know, some of them might be a little more obscure, but that's what I'm here for. To tell you and show you all that looms in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> One thousand years ago, superstition and the sword world, it was a world of fear. It was the age of gargoyles. Actually, it was the year 1995 that we got our first look at the TMNT Warrior. This is one of the classic cases where you're looking at your TV or your monitor or whatever and you're thinking to yourself, why am I only looking at two turtles right now? Well, because guess what? The Warriors line was one of the final lines which only had repaints except for Leo and Donnie. But Leo and Donnie themselves were just repaints. I got Leo over here because Donnie's expensive and Donnie is the exact same figure with the exact same mold only some color differences in it, but it's still the exact same thing, so not worth my time. I honestly have no idea why this line was called Warriors. I guess repaints wouldn't have sounded as good. So we got Mikey over here, who is just Metal Hat, actually. Obviously we got the Metal Hat mold just now covered in glorious chrome paint job. As a result, it looks super shiny and nice, but at the same time, the articulation is severely limited. Which used to be ball joint in the legs are now just swivels. Same thing for the arms, but that hasn't changed. But let's see at the bicep swivel. Oh, there's none of that. There's no swivel in the arm. Wow. But what is really the spooky part about this one? He has the brain sticking out of his head. And if we're going with lore about figures, this is basically, I'm guessing, Michelangelo died and it transplanted his brain into Metal Hat and gave him a repaint and we're like, yeah, now you're all good, buddy. Murderbot, Murderbot, Murderbot. Now here in Manhattan, the spell is broken and we leave again. Okay, enough of the goggles references. But no, we're actually here for the Leo as a goggle stuff because that looks actually pretty neat. I like the see-through bat wings. I don't know why they have veins on it. I mean, that's just makes it more disgusting, I'm guessing. There's a lot overall that went into the mold as well. He has a shark beak, spiky teeth, a vein in the neck, and all kind of scaly stuff going on on his head. Not only in the neck, but there's a lot more veins going on in the arm, and he has them spiky claws coming for you. And because they had a little bit of leftover chrome after they did the Michelangelo metal hat, they slapped some on Leo as well. Appreciate it. The color tone on this guy is just kind of weird with the dark blue and the gold, but for whatever reason, it works. Just what the hell happened to his shell? Even more mutation, and a tail for good measure. Let's be honest here, the TMNT Warriors line was a quick cash grab, just repainting figures and making the one new mold and then using that mold even twice in the same line. And if you're asking, what's the rest of the line? Well, it's a repaint of Robotic Bebop, it's a repaint of Chrome Dome and uh, a cancelled Raza with a fursuit. That was actually planned, but never came out. But I still really, really, really wanted to feature our goggle friend over here because all things being said, this mold is pretty damn rad. Just forget about this and look at that nice. That's pretty cool. So from gargoyles and machines, warriors, we're going to straight up movie monsters. Talking of course about a bunch of old horror icons, perfectly named Series 21. Wait, what? Yeah, the 2012 line wasn't really good at naming their stuff. It's all by the numbers. And speaking of which, the year these guys were released in was only 2017, so not too long ago. 
for this Halloween special. And guess what? Yes, these guys were released in October 2017, to be precise, right around the corner to give you your Halloween spook. Leonardo, rise from your grave. As a actually pretty well done mummy. By the way, the Cobra is an accessory, but I like to keep it around. But uh, it's just nice and rubbery material, which gives them that much more detail. So Mummy Leo is pretty straightforward. It's basically the turtle body that has been left largely untouched, except for some claws, and obviously a more scary looking face. Well, scary, the only thing that's really different are the super sharp eyes, which are a bit more reminiscent of classic turtles. Heck, even Batman in some way. He has a freakishly long bandana, but I gotta give him huge props on all the molded detail that goes on with the bandages. I mean, just look at it. It's beautiful, and it feels very realistic. As for the rest of it, I mean, I mentioned it already, I think the Cobra adds a lot to it. It kind of forms around like a belt, like a ninja belt of some kind of mutant turtle thing. I don't know if you heard about that one. And finally, yes, there is a tiny little scarab on his leg in a nice golden, dark brownish color, just like the rest of his accessories. Lord Dracula, the vampire bat, rises from his coffin. And one of the laziest ones of the bunch, I'm sorry, but right off the bat, pun intended. Raph just looks kind of weird. I know it's supposed to be Dracula, but why is he wearing a suit with a red fly and a flower on it? This looks like a Playmobil character. Now I do like the cloth cape that's attached to the arms, so it kind of moves with it fairly natural. But oh wait, those are only there to cover up for the elbow pads, which are still molded on there but not painted. And yes, he only has white gloves, even though the rest of the bandages is molded on once more, so I don't know. Also what's going on with his face? I mean, the spiky teeth, all right, that's fine. Why does he have sharp ears? And probably one of the worst haircuts I've seen in a while. I mean, let's be honest, you can only pull off this do if you're a vampire and your name's Blade. You don't look like Blade to me. But anyway, surprisingly, he's the only one who has the knee pads completely painted. All of the other ones really ditched that for the most part, except for... Frankenstein's monster, now featured as Donatello, or Donatello featured as Frankenstein's monster. I just like saying that. From the worst, arguably to the best. I mean, say what you want, but Donnie arguably looks the best. He still has the claws, which I just find weird that all of them have claws, even though I would say okay for the werewolf, but everybody else, I don't even know. But the idea here is to have Frankenstein's monster, and they did a banging job with that. I don't know about the plateau shoes, but the knee pads work with the rest of it because they have the same color. And all of the body looks like it's decaying from the shell that looks in very bad shape, like it's falling apart, has some metal keeping it together. Lots of stitches going on in the shell, even though I don't think stitches would take a shell together. But regardless of that, we even have some sort of energy packs or whatever in his back. That looks cool, nice and vibrant blue. And there's more stitches and unpainted metal parts going on in the shoulders. The elbow pads have some spikes on there, well, more like electric current stuff, I'm guessing. I'm sorry, I'm not an electrician, so I don't know what to call that. He has the one elbow pad and this face. Look at it! Look at it! Even though they fixed them up, they still didn't fix the tooth gap, but yeah, we got more stitches and the one screw that's coming out of his brain. And damn, they just cut his head off. So yeah, this one looks awesome. And then we got Beast Boy, Werewolf, Teen Wolf. Yes, actually Teen Wolf, which is pretty smart if you think about it. It's Michelangelo as a werewolf. Michelangelo is also a teenager as a werewolf and a mutant. Mutant teenager, mutant teenage werewolf. I don't know where I'm going with this. No, but seriously, this is Teen Wolf. If you don't know what Teen Wolf is, it was a TV show in the 80s with Michael J. Fox, who was a teenager, turning into a werewolf. Only now he's also green. And he likes pizza. Well, and again, all teenagers like pizza. What's really fun about this guy is the overall mode. 
Let's forget about the missing pain for a second over here in the bandana, or the wolf pack symbol in the back. No, I like all the textured fur in the arms, and even the elbow pads have just turned into big brown bushes. And obviously you gotta have the high school jacket with the M for mutant, or Michigan, same thing. And the ripped up pants, which is a surprisingly modern fashion trend. Da -da 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 -da. Bonus round! Not only did Series 21 give us turtles as monsters, it also gave us turtles as monster hunters. So I'm just gonna have a quick look over this, as it retains mostly the regular design with some added detail, like the charms over here, and obviously the entire coat, which he still retains his katana blades in, but we now have a hat with some nifty feature to hold on to the bandana and make it look pretty darn nice. Overall, I'm getting a huge Van Helsing vibe from this Leonardo. As for Rav, I'm not really sure who he's supposed to look like. Maybe it's just an original thing or just a regular trench coat with, again, some charms. This looks like cotton, but I'm guessing it's supposed to be onions to hunt out and vampires. But the most impressive feature is his accessory. What the hell is this? I thought this was supposed to be for kids. This looked like a steak throwing machine gun or something. Wow, so that's impressive. And as far as the rest of the figure goes, still Raph with a trench coat that drapes over his body and his hat is not removable. Bummer. Now we're talking spooky. They got the right stuff. You got some old horror icons, slap it together with turtles and you sell it to kids. It works and I dig it. But if you're thinking this is not the first time the Turtles have had such a radical makeover, you caught me. I kind of grabbed ahead of time a little bit because I want to keep the best for last. The original 1993 Universal Studios Monsters. Yes, Universal Studios actually did some sort of a crossover, having their most iconic movie monsters being combined with Turtles. Hmm. Crossovers. That sounds like a good idea for an episode. Oh wait, I've been there already. Once again rocking the exact same monsters as before. Dracula, Werewolf, Mummy and Frankenstein monster. Leonardo is a lot less teen and a lot more wolf. And a hell of a lot more menacing looking. All the molded fur covers his entire body. Except for the shell. The face is actually freakishly well done. I mean, look at those big, shiny teeth that just stick out of his snout. Completely ripped up outfit, but still representing the L in the belt and also the knee pads. This is really like Leonardo turning into werewolf and wearing pants and a white shirt for whatever reason. And then let's talk about how to pull off a good Dracula design. We got Donatello this time around not having a real cloth cape, but the plastic one does the job to fly around and scare little kids and get some virgins into his tower to suck your blood. <laughs> so let's see, once again, we're rocking the eyebrows. He has a weird big eye face, but look at them teeth. They aren't a lot, but they're detailed and the paint job, well, also slips, but look at that. Slicked back hair, doesn't look as goofy as the other one. He's the only one not rocking a belt, but uh, to compensate for that we have the Donatello logo on his chest. And a way better looking suit, because for one, this one's not just painted on and it doesn't look like a Playmobil character. No, it's molded on and it's actually very nice. Come take a closer look. And I really like this hand. Which for whatever reason has a ring on it. But whatever that's for, he has some very classy shoes and a pink line on his turtle junk. And also while not having a cloth cape, at least he has a nice bat wing design on the tips of it to add some more detail. So let's have another look at a mummy. How do you fix the mummy or how do you make it better? Well, not really anything there because it's a mummy. You have a turtle and you wrap bandages around it. Simple, but let me show you if I can the glow-in-the-dark feature that comes with all of them 
and my camera is really adjusting way too much to it. But basically, you turn off the lights, he's glowy all over the place, and it comes with all the turtles, just with the mummy, he's completely covered in it. Now the one thing they did do was make his skin look freakishly burned and have holes in it, and I don't really know what's going on with that, but I appreciate the added detail. Just like everybody else, he does rock a belt, but it's just painted and molded on, there's nothing to take off here. And I'm guessing as a side effect of the glow in the dark paint, we have paint bleeding on basically everything else. Call me a hypocrite, but I'm not really bothered by it, because it's a mummy. And it's a dead thing, and it's supposed to be rugged. Like, if you have a red belt, of course the red would kind of bleed over to your white bandages if you're spending years, thousands, millions of years in a sarcophagus. And finally we got Herman Munster. Just kidding. It's Michelangelo in the most classic of classic Frankenstein monster designs. He's got the big rectangular hat, even staples in it, and stitches all throughout the body. I gotta say, I think the bolts in his elbow pads are a nice touch, and he's also rocking the M symbol, which is kind of weird, is having them sick, clean apps under that. You also have the screws in his neck that keep the hat from falling off, and a nice grey jacket which is ripped a little bit in the back to cover everything up and them big leather boots. Now usually TMNT Toyphobic doesn't focus a lot on the accessories, I want to have a look at the figures, but, but, sometimes there's just special stuff I want to give a spotlight to. As for Michelangelo, he has the chain and a lock with a piece of the floor or whatever, the wall. Concrete, I'm guessing, and he can get that on his leg. Rawr, escape. And he has the nunchucks with some giant screws on it and a potion for whatever reason. And then for Donnie, he has a pretty fancy looking scepter with some bat designs in it. A single bat to put on his wrist. Here you go. Castlevania. I don't know. Just just found out saying Castlevania, I had to bring that in somehow. We got a Cobra Dagger for the mummy, just crazy stuff. And another Scarab watch, I'm guessing, for Raph again. And we got a Bone Sword for Leonardo as the wolf, kind of a little bone to chew on. And a sword to stick in your back, or the ribs, or the face, or whatever. And a fairly realistic looking gun, except for the spike that's coming out of it. Articulation wise, there's really nothing special, it swivels everywhere in the neck, the shoulder, the arms, the elbows, and just the feet are on ball joints. Well, actually the entire leg. So you could say the Universal Monster line was a lot more focused on sticking true to the original monster icons that Universal Studios has given us over the years. Do you think that's a bad thing or a good thing is up to you? It's whatever. It's a thing. So if you gotta have Universal Monsters 1, you gotta have Universal Monsters 2, right? Unfortunately, I don't. The reason behind that being, I tried, guys. I really tried getting my hands on the Universal Monsters 2 in preparation of this episode. I've been looking for it for months, but unfortunately, getting these four turtles, well, three turtles and April Neal, would have cost me about 400, 450 bucks. And that's money I sadly just don't have. So I gotta skip out on the Universal Monsters 2. You gotta give me a rain check on that one. I'm sorry. Obviously, I'm all about representing the classics, which is shown by me featuring TMNT. And then TNT goes out and features some more classic of the horror variety as he loses his cobra. So once again, we have come full circle. I don't know how many times I said that during the outro. But speaking of circles, how about crosses? No, we have vampires in the house, can't do that. A little bit of full moon for your werewolves. And whatever the hell attracts mummies. Just keep the fire away from the Frankenstein monsters. And a thousand years ago, Superstition, Goggles, was an amazing show, go watch it. And the murder robot. 
just because he's part of the Royals line, really. So that's gonna wrap things up for TMNT Toy Throwback Monster Spooktacular. <laughs> I'm trying to do my best filler laugh, but it's not really working. So that's gonna do it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this TMNT Toy Throwback, stay tuned for more. Subscribe to the channel, hit it up with a like, and I'll see you next time.